Here we are at Unity Las Cruces. And you know what? Is it coincidence or is it? That's the topic. Coincidence, chance, serendipity, spurts, and synchronicity. You know, I think I have a slide here. There we go. We all have stories, crazy coincidences, what happened then and its circuitous trail to our happy now. Like, if I hadn't taken that job, well, I wouldn't have met Ken. If I hadn't lost that job, I wouldn't have. If I hadn't mentioned that to so-and-so, my dream wouldn't have. And there's also this something I call the David Miller effect. So this is a picture of David Miller and myself uh, in Tucson last October with his new vehicle there. And there were, for those of you who don't know, Reverend David is the minister of, at the church that I was ordained at in Tucson called United Fellowship Chapel. So David's this kind of guy who things just happen for him. He's the guy that gets the, the parking spaces. Yeah, you know the kind? So he, he likes to call me up and tell me the stories when it happens. Uh, so it's really nice. Uh, so this is what happened. He, his phone wouldn't sync to his vehicle. And so he took his phone uh, to the phone, he took and went to the phone store. And he went in and he explained the situation and they said, no, no can do, can't help you. Uh, we don't go into vehicles. I suggest you go to the dealership. So off he went to the dealership, which of course was on the other side of town, but he went over there because it was on the way to the chapel. And, um, uh, and he went in and told the story and he said, oh sure, we can help you. And so you know what? Well, he left there with a brand new vehicle, the one that we're standing in front of, with a lower payment, <laughs> the same amount of months as before, and the phone was sinking beautifully with the new vehicle. That's a David Miller for you. So is, is, is serendipity working in David's life? Is that what was happening? Happy coincidence or serendipity? Freak accident or spiritual attention getter? Puckering of chance in the dimensional fabric? Or vortex of intention? Chance or divine grace? Spurt? or active law of radiation and, and attraction, random manifestations of grace or synchronicity. So here are some definitions. Well, I'm going to give you the definitions, but that's not what I'm going to give them on. Coincidence, a remarkable occurrence of events or circumstances without apparent causal connection. And serendipity, the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. You're going to hear some, start hearing repeats here. Spurs, a series of events that occur which possess similarities significant enough to stand out in your mind and make an impression. Remember the slug bug game, whatever, when we're, yeah, okay. Uh, synchronicity, the simultaneous occurrence of events which appear significantly related but have no discernible causal connection. And spiritual tap on the shoulder, whisper, nudge, divine sign. Grace, as uh, said, as defined in the great uh, revealing word. Goodwill, favor, disposition to show mercy, aid from God in the process of regeneration. By grace have ye been saved, from Ephesians chapter two, verse five. So how do we turn these curious happenings into intentional manifestations? Because we don't want to be at the mercy and whim of of coincidence, do we? So here's my take on, on it. We're hooked on the idea that intellect is the highest attribute we have. And, and, and it points to, we point to reasons why, like the science of random theory, as to why a thing like coincidence could happen. Or we're afraid of the boogeyman. Uh, not the dancing kind, but the, 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 the one that doesn't exist, the non-existent kind. Other names we might use, but we don't have to. Uh, cop to the real deal, and pause, and look to see what's really happening. Or maybe we never gave it much thought before, went along with what we've been told all our lives. Well, lightning never strikes twice, right? Mm. Think of all the coincidences, whether unconsciously or consciously, and that happened in our lives, and then try to correlate how much more powerful intentionally creating could be. Here's a quote from Carl Jung. He wrote, 
con continuous creation is to be thought of not only as a series of successive acts of creation, but also as the eternal presence of the one creative act. As an attendee or member of Unity, whether consciously or unconsciously, a student of, the, of the, your path, working on intentionally or not, uh, the student of metaphysics understands the non-existence and non-truth of coincidences, accidents, or chance. From The Medicine Woman, uh, written by a woman named Lynn Andrews, accident is a way to lay down the responsibility for your action and ask another to pick it up. And from the Kabbalion, a study of the, hermetic, of the hermetic philosophy of ancient Egypt and Greece, written by the three initiates, a, uh, and they, these three initiates remain anonymous. They wrote this, chance is but a name for law, not recognized. There are many planes of causes, causation, but nothing escapes the law of cause and effect, one of the sacred principles that they write about in the Kabbalion. And now I'd like to bring your attention to the law of radiation and attraction. Everything you put out into the universe comes back to you. So there are the tiny particles of matter or things in the, in the world, in the physical world, they're broken down, they break down, and, and they're actually energy. They're the stuff of the universe. And everything is composed of this stuff or the energy. And the deal is that this energy is magnetic. I think back in science class, well, the, the iron shavings, okay? The Rosicrucians actually use that as one of the experiments in their, in their studies. So think of this radiation that we're putting out. So the energy of our thoughts, words, and, and actions radiate and attract. There are no mulligans. It is what it is. Whether we're aware of it or not, whether we believe it or not, like gravity, the law of radiation and attraction doesn't care whether or not you believe it. <laughs> Your compassionate prayer for a tornado-ravaged area radiates. Your white lighting of an ambulance radiates. You are thanking God and the farmers for a delicious kale radiates. <laughs> <laughs> or pick a thing. <laughs> so this is what happens. Our personal energy radiates, and just living is a ripple effect. So we, we make a difference. Whether we are meaning to or not, we do. We make a difference. We just are because we're living. So everything is always radiating and, and attracting. And <clears throat> Uh, so we, but we decide how we radiate, okay? So uh, just as an example, think of how we're, when you walk through, a, a, hello, we walk through a, 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 a field of, of grain or a field of grass, or you walk through a pool of water, or if you, if you can picture it, you're walking through the air and you're leaving a wake behind you, and there's a ripple effect. The blades and the, and the stems and the plants are all touching the next blades and stems, and and so on. So, it, you know, we are not in a, in a vacuum in a bubble here. <clears throat> and also, the spiritual tap on the shoulder. <clears throat> now, the spiritual tap on the shoulder, I think we have a uh, slide there. <clears throat> yes. It's the divine. It taps us on the shoulder. So whatever name you want to use, whether it's God or an angel or your higher power or higher self, this divine tap on the shoulder, it starts out faintly, like a feather, or a whisper, or an idea. Then, the more we ignore it, the stronger the nudge gets. Until we're running on fumes, and our immunity suffers, and we get a cold or, or worse, then we listen. Finally, we listen, right? I want to share with you uh, <clears throat> something uh, that happened to me. It was a near-death experience happened a number of years ago. Um, my managing editor job ended with the magazine called Positive Alternatives when the magazine folded. My next job as an as a editor and trainer uh, ended when the 
the uh, business lost its software, or the company lost its software business. My relationship at the time ended, and my life was out of kilter. My grandpa had a stroke, and I, uh, I went to Globe, Arizona, which if any of you know, is pretty much in the middle of nowhere, Arizona, a mining town. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, so I was there helping Grandpa, and it was cold, started getting cold. This was in November, and I uh, headed back up to Salt Lake, where I was living at the time. Um, I wasn't prepared. Let's just say my military driving training did not prepare me for hitting the black ice in southern Utah uh, on uh, I-15. We fishtailed, I, I fishtailed, spun out of control, uh, hit the rough dirt on the side of the road, you know, the, what I mean, the tires hit that, and then flipped up through and flew through the air. Uh, rolled three times down the hill and landed in between two mountain cliffs, just barely making it. As I was flying through the air, I heard this guttural, screaming, shouting moan shouting thing, and it, I realized it was me. And once I realized it was me, I, I prayed to God. I, I screamed inside my head, at least I think it was inside. God, I'm not ready. I have more work to do. And you know, um, yeah, I walked away from that with bruises and the need for a good chiropractor. And when I went back to Globe, with my warmer clothes, I, um, you know, I prayed and I asked God to show me the way and, and help me get my life back on track. Uh, uh, and this is what happened. In three months after that, I got a call, a random call. First of all, how they found my grandfather's phone number, because this was before people were running around with cell phones. So they had to find the landline number, and it was off of a three-year-old resume, and the contact information on the resume was for Virginia. So how they found me, I don't know, but they called me to, for an interview for a job up in Salt Lake uh, at a place that Ken actually travels to quite a bit. Now, how interesting is that? And um, uh, so three months later, I had the job. So it, it, and that's how it worked. That job launched me on my way, launched me back on my way. So, but you know, we don't all need these spiritual two by fours. Some of us aren't as, uh, you know, I won't say thick headed because that wouldn't be fair. But you know, we, we need, sometimes we just need a little more than, but we don't all need the big, big ones, okay? We can be, aware, we can listen, and we can grant our intuition equal rights. Think of the powers and grace working through us into our world. From Grace Awakening, this is part of a 75-page course that was written by a woman named Tammy, or sorry, Debbie Tyson uh, for the Unity School of Religious Studies. And in it, she writes, Grace Consciousness is a consciousness that is vibrating on all levels of being according to the nature of God within, which is love. The nature of God within, which is love. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, she also writes about these four blocks of consciousness that resist the activity of grace within us. First is negative thinking resulting from human perceptions or judging by appearances. Two is the insistence of even exchange all the time. Three is the belief we are of ourselves must do all the work. Anybody feeling like that sometimes? And then four, the fear that the will of God might cause us some pain and suffering. Yeah, I think we've heard that one. So here's the law of subjective attention. And this is my, my definition, and I'll tell you why here in a second. The use of the subjective mind to tap into the flow of knowledge. So this is often considered the faculty used uh, when we are thinking of someone, and then we learn that that person was thinking of us. Or maybe we get an out of the blue uh, phone call or a text 
an email of some kind. It, it, it reminds us that we are all connected. So here's an example of, of uh, what I was doing with the law of subjective attention. Well, I was looking for a one-liner definition because there had to be one. And so here I was scouring up my notes and um, uh, then I Googled one for one and uh, you know, and up in the Google came uh, the name of a book I already had uh, on my bookshelf. Actually, the book was, was in, the, uh, in my notes, but I, was, I didn't get up and go to the bookshelf to get it. So here I found it in Google again. Here we are. So, I, so it's called A New Text of Spiritual Philosophy and Religion. So okay, all right. So I uh, I opened it up and gosh, you know, it came to this this uh, was bookmark was already here. And guess where it was at? The law of subjective attention. <laughs> and guess what the the uh, the bookmark says? We'll save you some time. <laughs> oh, you can't make that up. You just can't make it up. <clears throat> so there you go. I was open to the law of subjective attention. You know, in the law of subjective retention, we recognize our dual nature. So by that I mean, I recognize our need to use our objective mind, which is our conscious mind, our deductive reasoning, a focus or a, a concentration on earthly affairs, the earth plane. The subjective mind, also, we use that too. Now that's our subconscious mind, our intuitive, and our focusing on things more etheric, spiritual, let's say. And then also what Eric Butterworth calls the uh, superconscious mind, the creative intention, the divine flow within each person, and what Edmund Fox called the true place. So the true place, that's the place it, from where we meditate, we pray, we, we uh, affirm and we visualize. And then we speak from that place, the true place. We speak and act in accordance with our creative intention. So, you know, it's not enough just to want something, but we also want to act in accordance with, and we want to act from that true place, so that superconscious. It's a good time to remind ourselves that it is not woe is me, it is wow is me, okay? That's what we're talking about. Now, I'm gonna ask you to remember Daniel McNeil talking to us, uh, was it just last week? And he gave us a beautiful meditation in which he did this. Uh, he allowed one power, one of the 12 powers, to bless the other powers. And one power to bless another power. You see what I'm saying? And in the same vein, uh, Reverend Dr. Catherine Ponder writes in her book, The Healing Secrets of the Ages, remember that your 12 mind powers are like people. They can be praised and blessed and do much work for you but they rebel against force. When you gently and lovingly begin to give them your attention and recognition, they will respond. But in their own time, in their own way, they will not be forced, rushed, or dictated to. So the gentle and loving is the way. Gently and lovingly. Now as a recap, I wanna go through this. Coincidence, chance, serendipity, spurts and synchronicity, or are they? This quote is attributed to uh, Albert Einstein. That's a wonderful picture of it, don't you think? <laughs> I forget what rule it is, never take your, yourself, number 62 maybe, you don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> a coincidence is a small miracle when God chooses to remain anonymous. You know, we turn to these, these uh, curious happenings into intentional manifestations by doing these things, actively and intentionally creating our lives and doing things like this, for example, listen to and act on our intuition. Recognize the law of radiation and attraction working in our lives. For example, we want to create and live accordingly. And remember, it just is, it is what it is. Like gravity, we radiate. The energy of our thoughts, words, and actions radiate and attract. And we can choose healing. We choose healing prayer, affirmation, or visualization over worry. 
I got a chance to use this that this week when I, I found out my mother's purse was stolen uh, from someone who came to visit her. We, it was moved from the house, and I was my first response was not uh, not of that ilk that I just read. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I worked with myself, and, I'm, and here I am working on this talk, and, and I thought, oh my God, I moved, help me move this into this right space. You know, I prayed and affirmed, and, and I got to the right space, uh, and to the point where I could almost forgive the person, and then I, and then I could forgive the person. And instead of going into the frustration of it, and staying in the frustration of it, I moved to pray for my mother and sending her healing so that she could relax. You know, this is another affirmation I like when we get frustrated. And then you've heard this, me say this, but I'm going to say it again. I have all the time I need to do everything I want or need to do. We sometimes forget that. And that's a good affirmation. To, to remember. And gently and lovingly allow the 12 powers, faith, strength, judgment, love, power, imagination, will, understanding, order, zeal, elimination, and life. Gently and lovingly allow those 12 powers to work through us. We allow grace to flow into every aspect of our lives and beings beyond the happenstance of coincidence we allow. Hey, what's the best that can happen, huh? <laughs> now, during our meditation today, I'm going to uh, ask that we allow the divine order to bless our centers. And as, uh, as, as uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Catherine Ponder wrote in her book, The Healing Secrets of the Ages, as you begin to call on and release your mind power of order, everything in your world will begin to respond. And, and so, whether you align yourself with the chakra system, the tree of life, or the tree of knowledge, or the 12 powers, or all the above, remember that divine order automatically recalibrates the remaining centers. So, in our, behind our uh, belly button, that's where is the center of order, and we're going to call upon order as we breathe into it from the top, toe, tips of our toes to the top of our head and everywhere in between. We're going to do the physical body, the mental, the emotional, and spiritual bodies. All of it. Okay? We leave no body behind. Okay? <laughs> all right. So let's relax and get into a space that you can wiggle into. And take a deep breath and breathe into that center of order. Right into that belly. Breathe in and relax. Let that breath relax and enter your entire being. Feel this energy surround you. The order is surrounding you. The divine order surrounds you within and without. And we're beginning at the feet now and blessing those feet, allowing order to relax the muscles, heal any hurt, healing those feet, and moving up into the ankles, the shins, the calves, and into the knees, we relax and allow order to take place. We recognize flexibility in our lives. We are flexible in our lives. And we move up our thighs and into our, our hips, the right and the left, into the base of our spine. Order, breathing in, and moving this order, blessing order, into this area. We fully and completely release and let go all that which does not belong to us and lose ourselves to our own good. Elimination is in perfect order. Our life is in perfect order. And we are in balance with our left hip and our right hip. We are in perfect balance as we move forward in our day. 
allow this beautiful energy, this beautiful energy now blessing order into the base of our spine and moving up our spine and into our lower abdomen. Feel the energy healing that area. We know that everything in that area, every cell, every organ, every tissue, is happy to do its job, perfectly happy to do its job in a perfect way, in perfect divine order. And the energy moves up our spine and up into our upper, upper abdomen, healing us. We know that divine order exists here divine order, blessing our strength, blessing our understanding, blessing our order, blessing our love, allowing the love and the compassion to grow in our chest, growing. This beautiful healing energy of God, the divine, moving up our hands, relaxing them, knowing that we are perfectly in divine order with our giving and receiving, and this energy moving up our arms and into our shoulders where we know that we are carrying our responsibilities and letting all of those responsibilities that do not belong to us remain with the individuals they belong to. And feel the relaxing, the perfect divine order here. Into our power center, Blessing, divine order now, blessing our power center, relaxing our jaws, surrounding our entire necks, moving up over our face, relaxing the scalp, touching our understanding, our faith. Divine order is manifest in our faith, our zeal, our imagination, from the tips of our toes to the very crown of our I am presence. Divine order is now established in me by the power of the indwelling Christ. Divine order is now established in my mind, body, and affairs by the power of the indwelling Christ. I am in divine order. My mind is in divine order. My body is in divine order. My affairs, my affairs are in divine order. My relationships, they are in divine order. Every phase of my world is in divine order. Divine order heals, prospers, and guides me now from the tips of my toes to the tops of my head. Surrounding me and filling this space, this country, and this world, our planet, divine order exists. Everywhere we are, everywhere we think, everywhere we look, divine order lives. Feel this energy now in your hands, in your feet, as you feel yourself back in this room, feeling yourself very much here in this room, from where you were within yourself, knowing that all is well, and divine order is active in our lives today. And so it is. Thank you.